baseball. In a Sports Illustrated profile, Brian Cashman, the Yankees GM, revisits the contentious contract negotiations with Derek Jeter in 2010. Jeter asked Cashman whom he would rather have at shortstop, and he responded by telling him Troy Tulowitzki, quote, we're not paying extra money for popularity, we're paying for performance. Cashman called Jeter the greatest player I will have ever had, but the GM also told SI that he grew impatient with Jeter's diva qualities and enjoyed being able to turn down some of his requests. The two sides eventually agreed upon a three-year, $51 million deal. Ironically, around that same time, Tulo and the Rockies came to terms on a very lucrative extension as well. Stephen A., it's your guy, your thoughts. You know, I know this is five years ago, but... Uh I almost want to go to Yankee Stadium myself and, and, and fire Brian Cashman for this. I mean, this blasphemy? I mean, this, is, is this, you going to say that to Derek Jeter? I mean, really? You know, in all seriousness, Troy Tulowitzki can really, really play. And in the aftermath of that, he batted like 302 with 105 RBIs and 30 home runs. Jeter's no home run hitter. So from a numbers perspective, statistical, St statistically speaking, we understand that you can make the argument that you can get somebody who can do more for you than Derek Jeter's Derek Jeter from a numbers perspective. The crime in Brian Cashman acknowledging what he acknowledged in all seriousness, because I like Brian Cashman. I don't agree with what he said to Derek Jeter, but I like him. But here's where it's criminal what he said. Anybody that's in a clubhouse know it is rare that you have somebody that adds an element to a locker room that ultimately lends itself towards championships. There's a whole bunch of cats smacking 25-plus home runs and 80, 90-plus RBIs every year that never win a damn thing. They're never anywhere, but they put up their numbers. But when you incorporate them into a winning situation or a situation that mandates and requires winning like the Yankee base does in the Bronx, New York, sometimes dudes wither beneath all of that. That wasn't Derek Jeter. One of the reasons why Derek Jeter is such an iconic figure, it's not just because he's a five-time champion or a 14-time All-Star. It's because he is who he is, and we know that's a component that led to those five championships, that led to those 14 All-Star appearances. It's showing up and producing in big moments. It's really capturing the totality of a moment and responding to the challenge that lies before you in the most pressurized situations. That's what Jeter does. It's also making sure that you galvanize the troops around you and that they maximize their potential. It's not just about what you do. It's about what you lead others to do as well. So if you're just looking at numbers, certainly Brian Cashman has a right to do that, particularly the way George Steinbrenner, God rest his soul, the former owner for the New York Yankees, used to just shatter their farm system and just spend money to get high-priced free agents and others to come to New York. The flip side is that you have to have the foresight, not just hindsight, but the foresight, not just to see where some, what somebody has done, but what they're still capable of doing as you move into a different era. So I think it was just a negotiating position on a part of Cashman. They did ultimately reach an agreement. Cashman didn't want to be bullied by the popularity of a Derek Jeter. But in the end, let's be serious here. If you're just looking at numbers, there's a few people that you can put ahead of Derek Jeter, Skip. I won't deny that. But Derek Jeter was never measured by just numbers. He was measured by championships. He was measured by culture, what you established as a member of the New York Yankees. And when you consider the great tradition of this franchise and what it established long before Derek Jeter arrived, he was one that assisted into bringing it into the new millennium because he was an individual that obviously, you know, facilitated excellence. And for the most part, they achieved it. Okay, I hear everything you just said. I'm also going to take these Cashman quotes very seriously. No, no kidding here. Kidding, all kidding aside, I must admit, 
I do get occasionally annoyed with your ongoing hero worshiping of Derek Jeter, your ongoing idolatry that you display often on this show of Derek Jeter. But come on, Derek Jeter was all time great, especially when it really mattered in the postseason. What he did was was just astonishing with with the tools he had to work with. You, you want to talk about the all-time greatest overachiever because he didn't have the most this or that, didn't have the biggest arm or the most speed or the most power. Was he great? Yeah, he was great. Were his intangibles off the charts? Yes, they were. I, I'm with you on all the above. I also have great respect for a Brian Cashman continuing to be successful in the New York market and continuing to... to to not only deal with, but to ma almost manage the New York media, which is extremely difficult to do. Which brings me to my question here, and I, I will admit to you, I chuckled to myself when I read these quotes in Sports Illustrated that, that Brian has given to Sports Illustrated for their report, or their story on him. But my first thought was, well, finally the truth comes out. But, but why did Brian Cashman want the truth to be told about all this? I, I don't know. What purpose does it serve now, Neither looking back? What, what good does it do the New York Yankees? What, what good does it do Brian Cashman to take shots at the icon in, in, in the rearview mirror? You know, if, if he had stepped up and said these things as they were happening, that would have had impact. I mean, well, it, go ahead. I can, only think, I can only think of two possibilities. I do not know, first of all. But I can only think of two possibilities. One is that Brian Cashman wanted to show his toughness in being a leader as an executive for the New York Yan Yankees mm -hmm. as it pertains to contract negotiations, etc. The other is it comes across as him saying, look, I respect Derek Jeter too, but I sort of want the world to know he yeah. isn't, you know, the way y'all think he is. That's right. That's how I saw it. I, I agree with you. Look, it, it's, it's no shock to me. It's hard to argue with his stance that, that he, he told Derek Jeter, hit him as the agent said, right between the eyes, I would rather have Troy Tulowitzki. This is going back three years ago. Well, who could argue with that as Derek Jeter was age 37? And he did have, as you point out, he had the one last hurrah year in 2012 when he led the league in hits. That was phenomenal. But then he got hurt the next year, and then that last year at age 40, it wasn't pretty, but the, the, the quotes that jumped off the page to me were that Brian Cashman took great pleasure in denying Derek Jeter's diva requests. Well, now that's news. That, that's diva requests? Wow. Because I don't what think the, what the, what the public at large mean? would see Derek Jeter as a diva. Um, I don't know, just little quotes that he wanted to, through his last couple of years, and Cashman took pleasure in saying, no. Well, th that's, that's news, man. That's shocking. And that's the part that I was surprised that Brian Cashman would want made public. Well, the other part about it, Skip, is that usually Brian Cashman is supposed to be talking to your agent. Sounds to me like he was saying things that he told Derek Jeter to his face. Yep. So why was there a face-to-face -face confrontation? It seems to me like something was wrong with that picture. In the end, Derek Jeter may have been a diva. I don't know. He doesn't seem that way to me, I can tell you that. But we do have to say to ourselves, if there are individuals who've, who, who've earned diva status, wouldn't Derek Jeter apply? At some point in time, don't your years of service and what you do matter to an organization if you're uh, if you're if you're sure. a multi-billion dollar establishment and say somebody wants a car ride to and from the stadium say they want extra tickets or something like you know when we talk about diva style things it may be something along those lines is that really too much to ask for for a guy who contributed in filling the seats for years i don't think so i don't know i i don't know much about diva behavior because i've never worked with the diva before oh, me either yeah i, don't I, know I wouldn't any know of them yeah Neither, neither would I. <laughs> Jeter is still winning from the personal perspective because he's dating my girl, Hannah Davis. Shout out to the Virgin Islands. Also winning from that perspective is Tom oh, Brady. Mm. It's coming down to the you wire, said shout folks. shout out to the Virgin Islands. What, yeah, St. Thomas. I, she's, I, she's from St. Thomas. 
Okay. Yeah, so is my family. Should That's Brady just settle at yeah. this point? Megan's Bay, it's beautiful. We'll bring in one of his former teammates to discuss Damian Woody in just a bit.